Hi everyone, this is Christian Kjelpner from the Willow Project. We've been getting a lot of questions about how uh, our speech recognition works and the interaction between Willow and the Willow inference server when you're not using local command detection. So um, I thought I'd give a kind of a, not only a sneak peek of the Willow inference server itself, but also a little more of a dig under the covers to explain kind of generally what's going on and what we're doing and how we do it. So the top left corner, we have a camera on the ESP box. The top right corner, we have a camera kind of showing my, my messy office desk. And on the terminal window on the left, we have the serial console output from Willow. And the terminal window on the right, we have debug logging turned on on the Willow inference server. So with that, let's get started. Hi ESP, turn on upstairs desk lamps. And we can stop it right there and let's Let's look at what happened here. So of course, everything starts on the ESP box itself. Um, the first thing that we get, of course, is a wake up event from the, the wake word engine. When I said the wake word that I'm not going to repeat because of course it will wake up again. We don't want to do that. Um, and then we can start to kind of look into some of the timing information. I, uh, I hesitated here a bit. I've, I've had to do multiple takes of this thing, so I'm kind of all over the place, but let's, let's keep moving along. Um, there's, you know, I don't know, like 450, 550, whatever plus milliseconds in between um, when Wake started and when my actual speech for the command started uh, with this uh, voice activity detection start event. Uh, the very, very first thing that we do in the, in the event that you're using the Willow inference server and Willow in server inference mode is we start an HTTP pipeline, in this case, HTTPS, of course, uh, it's 2023. Um, and you can see that this is the, the URL of our, our kind of uh, best effort hosted uh, kind of demo example server for the, for the community that wants to play around with Willow. Um, we take the audio generally um, from the actual audio hardware itself and we use the ESPSR uh, audio front end interface to do automatic game control, acoustic echo cancellation, source separation, all of these kind of different things that you need to do to get quality audio from 25, 30 feet away in challenging environments. Um, <clears throat> We, we write out bytes as a, you know, kind of as we stream in real time, right, clearly. Um, and then the next important thing that happens is I stop talking. So this is the voice activity detection end event, at which point we write a uh, kind of an end chunked marker, which demonstrates to the, or really communicates to the Willow inference server um, that voice has stopped and you can go do your thing. And with that, we can move over to the Willow inference server and you can see that we got some information about the request. We, we support multiple different codecs and sample rates and those kinds of things. So we like to, again, very verbose, we like to turn that up. Um, I'm using the Whisper medium model. That's, uh, that's the full medium model, not, not medium English, uh, with a beam size of one and language detection turned, turned off uh, to, to help speed inference times, uh, but that's, that's of course configurable on a per request basis. Um, we print a lot of timing information. You can probably tell that we're a little obsessed with timing in, uh, in, in trying to make this as performant as possible. And we can see that um, the, uh, the ASR transcript of turn on upstairs desk lamps, which happens to be what I said, uh, came back in roughly 240 milliseconds of inference time on the server, which represents uh, a, an 8x speed up versus the duration of the, of the speech. So now the Willow inference server has done its job. We, we go back over here and we see that we get an HTTP response, sure enough, with turn on upstairs desk lamps. And Willow, uh, if, if your version of Home Assistant supports it, um, connects uh, and maintains a persistent WebSocket connection. So basically we take that text, we drop it down the WebSocket to Home Assistant, and now Home Assistant goes and does its thing. So we see that Home Assistant response time, action done. This playtone task is us, uh, is us playing that confirmation beep. And then we also, uh, you know, just kind of, again, we're very verbose at this point. Um, we, we return the actual event that came back from Home Assistant. So, you know, we can do interesting things like actually really tell you what, what happened and whatever. 
Um, so now let's start to just kind of look at timing in a little in a little more depth and detail. So I'll try to do the math as best I can on the fly, but I, I, I'm not going to make you any promises. So let's say that we started talking at uh, 51 and a half seconds after after 12:30. So 51 and a half seconds in, that's when when VAD starts. Of course, the timing starts to get a little interesting uh, from here because any of the logging and stuff is is going to depend on on how long you're talking. Clearly, right? So. To kind of correct for that in this um, in this kind of rough, rough estimate of the timing and you know how how these things work and what's going on here, um, we're we're going to go from um, the end of the voice activity or, or excuse me like we're going to start timing from uh, voice activity detection end um, because that's when the kind of user's perception of the response time actually becomes important. It's obviously you're talking. I'm done talking. Go do something and I want to see it happen, how long does that take? That's, that's, that's what we're really focused on here, right? So now let's call it, uh, we're at 53 seconds. Again, I'm going to try to do this math as best as I can. Um, the, f the first thing that we, uh, you know, again, we, 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 start the, we start the stream request, we start doing whatever, we get the response back. So you can see, and, and of course this is going to vary on, based on internet latency and whatever else. Um, not, a, not an issue if you're self-hosting and everything is local. Of course, the, the internet's out of the picture there and you're not gonna have any variability in these, in these kinds of response times. So stop talking at 53.225. We got our text back at 53.668 from the Willow Inference server and Let's see, 53,679, pretty quick there. Um, Send it off to Home Assistant. Home Assistant's doing a great job as well. So Home Assistant came back at 5385. At this point, the action has actually happened. The lamp is off for, for what the user really cares about. We're, we're done here. So we could kind of look at that and we can say, oh, okay, you know, it was like roughly 600 milliseconds in, in this particular case. Um, which is actually on the on the high side. Um, there, there's probably some internet latency or, or something something going on here. Um, but you know, from from end of speech to done done done, we have nothing left going on. We have nothing else to do. Um, it was you know still well within our our goal and our benchmark of being sub one second for for execution of. Uh, of speech commands with wake word and all of these you know kind of other interesting audio processing things that that mean that you can have a, a true Alexa like experience uh, only now with Willow and open source software and hardware. So I hope this helps kind of uh, you know kind of clear up some of the confusion um, and, you know and the important thing is um, next week when we release Willow Inference Server, you'll be able to, to set that up yourself and, and dig in and play around and hopefully enjoy it as, as much as we have. Well, thanks a lot and we'll see you next week.